Ansela, I'm from Tafwa, and I love to listen to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, this is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, investigation begins into the sinking of MB Sullivan in the Suva Harbour. Prime Minister Boringe Mbani Marama calls for global action against climate change. An activist march for awareness on violence against women. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has called for industrialized nations to end their complacency and commit to controlling carbon emissions at the COP21 summit in France next week. The Prime Minister was addressing a meeting of the African, Caribbean and Pacific Council of Ministers in Belgium yesterday. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has reaffirmed Fiji's offer of permanent refuge to the people of Kiribati and Tuvalu should their island homes disappear to rising sea levels. Benimarama told the ACP Council that nations which are refusing drastic action need to be prodded out of their complacency. In what we can to help ourselves, it is now time, it is high time for the industrialized nations to do what they must do to save us and save our planet. They must cut their carbon emissions and buy much more than many of them are planning to do. The Prime Minister has used many international events to bring attention to the plight of Pacific Island nations facing the brunt of climate change issues. The ACP Council meeting in Brussels, Belgium, has presented another opportunity to lobby support for reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. It is morally unacceptable to sacrifice our survival to maintain the current status in the developed and emerging nations. And history will judge us very harshly if at this point in time we fail to act. The Fijian government for its part has been building resilience to climate change, whether it's moving flooded settlements to higher ground or preparing people for devastating and unpredictable cyclones. Baini Marama says time is running out and the COP21 summit in France next week is critical for future generations. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Civil society organizations, local governments and the private sectors play a key role in climate change negotiations. This was highlighted at a seminar on business and climate change in Suva in preparations for the COP21 meeting in Paris next week. The private sector have been reminded their contribution is important for the success of COP21. Companies have the responsibility to adjust their business models to keep global temperature rise in check. Until recently, climate change negotiations involve diplomats and some specialized NGOs. The reason why is the highly technical nature of these negotiations. Yet, uh, success will not come through negotiations only. It will come by steadily implementing new ways of life by changing everybody's life for a more environment-oriented one. A 23-year-old man from Rwanda died in the CWM Hospital Intensive Care Unit last night after an alleged beating. FBC News understands the beaten victim was taken to the Rwanda police station after an incident involving property damage. Later, he was taken to the Colonial War Memorial Hospital where he was admitted into the intensive care unit and passed away last night. Police will await the post-mortem results to ascertain the cause of death. 18 Fijians died this year as a result of domestic violence. 16, according to the Fiji Women's Crisis Center, were women. The Fiji Women's Crisis Center has begun 16 days of activism to end violence against women with the message that violence in any form is everybody's business. Maggie Boyle with the story. 
It's an annual event concerned citizens take to the street, making their voices heard and setting the agenda on International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women. To stop all forms of violence against women, girls and of course children together. We arranged this march to put the activism back into the 16 days of activism. Fiji Women's Crisis Centre coordinator Shimina Ali says while the campaign to end violence has been ongoing for 30 years, there remains many challenges. We have got good legislation, but when it comes to implementation, many people don't know the law. So women are being victimized when they report domestic violence. The Turangani Koro of Vui Singa in Naita Siri, changing the mindset in his village is a lesson for others. We are so thankful that we can support our women in eradicating issues that affect our women who are overpowered by women. Activists from all walks of life, armed with placards and banners, ended their march at Sukuna Park. We as young women want to take ownership as well of, of, this, of this issue, violence against women, gender-based violence, because it affects basically all of us. Like violence is a global issue and I think women and children all over the world, they are victims of any violence in the home. Encourage all young women who are probably listening in or watching in through television, to stand up, take a stand and say it's not right. The campaign, 16 Days of Activism Against Violence Against Women, ends on December 10th, the International Human Rights Day. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News Culinary Competition tests local talent. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharkan. So far, there has been no report from those on board the MV Sullivan when rolled on its side and sank in the Suva Harbour. 34 crew and staff of the shipping company Venu Shipping were rescued by tugboats, a Navy patrol and small fishing boats. However, just what happened has remained undisclosed. As investigations begins into the sinking, the Maritime Safety Authority has cleared the entrance to Suva Harbour as safe for transiting ships. Ellen Stalls has the story. This young man is one of the crew who was on board the sinking vessel. The relief on his face speaks volumes of what it must have been like to be on the MV Sullivan as it went down. The one-hour ordeal was an emotional time for all crew members and their families who watched on from Port Moy Walu in Walu Bay. At the time of the incident, the vessel was carrying 30 crew and four drivers who worked for Venue Shipping, which owns the sunken vessel. This young man is another one of the crew. He was reluctant to say anything about his experience. What's more strange is that the rescue ship, the Sinuiwasa, once it reached the harbor, didn't let any of the survivors off the vessel for about half an hour. It took policemen repeatedly beating on the door of the vessel before anyone responded and let the traumatized sailors out. The Sinuiwasa is the sister vessel of the MV Sullivan also owned by Venue Shipping. The company has told FBC News that it won't be making any comments on the incident. Police spokesperson Anna Naisoro says they have managed to interview two of the crew members while the others remain in a state of shock. One of the first responders, a nearby villager, says they came out to help with rescue efforts. <laughs> The ship was listing and when the other two ships tried to pull it, that's when it sank. Permanent Secretary for Transport, Francis Keane, says the Maritime Authority of Fiji has started investigations and is also liaising with oil companies for the use of their oil spill equipment. The process of appointing a 
uh, board of inquiry uh, to uh, conduct uh, the relevant investigations into the circumstances behind uh, this very unfortunate uh, maritime incident which was uh, witnessed uh, in Suvahab uh, late yesterday afternoon. Last night, Fiji Ports Corporation staff were monitoring the sunken ship. A light buoy has been installed at the site to warn all ships transiting in the area. But the harbour remains open for all vessels. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Local chefs have been given a platform to express their creativity and be critiqued by world-class judges. The tourism industry wants to bolster Fiji's image as a destination that can offer an array of exquisite cuisines for all. Marium Bolaitamana was at the opening of the Salon Kalinir on Denara Island today. It's every food lover's heaven at the Sofitel Resort and Spa as the country's best in the business showcase their culinary skills right into the weekend. As you know, our local chefs are very creative and the competition brings out the best in them and this is happening on a yearly basis. And apart from, the, apart from their own expertise, there's also the issue of uh, them using our local ingredients and things, which is, all, which is great for us. Uh, and in terms of us trying to push the hotels to, to use as much local uh, produce as possible. The annual competition is being built as a new addition to Fiji's popularity using local produce and locally inspired dishes. In TVs, you know, cooking shows, cooking program, all these, so many cooking programs out there. Huh? I don't want to sound rude, but how many other trades uh, in, in our hospitality, how many other trade department has those things going on? You know? So this uh, an industry needs to support these things because it's, again, it's all our local uh, young chefs competing. No, these, these are the ones who's going to step up tomorrow and take in charge of the bigger roles. The competition will be judged by chefs from Australia, New Zealand and Vanuatu who already have a good feedback after day one. We've got some great uh, judges here who, are, uh, who after the competition are giving them their views, uh, explaining them uh, what they could have done a little different or a little better. Uh, so, yes, competition is, is good, but at the same time, there's a lot of things to take back from here. The three-day competition ends on Friday with an awards gala night dinner. Madhya Mbolaitamana, FBC News. We cross live to Nandi, where Madhya Mbolaitamana is standing by. Madhya, how important is a platform like this for our local chefs? Jackie, it's more critical than most of of us would realize. I was talking to a few industry stakeholders at the opening of the annual event this morning and there is a buzz of optimism in the tourism industry about what the event can produce for the future. Fiji has always been known for its friendly people, the sun, the surf and something that will definitely be a selling point for the future is exquisite cuisine using locally produced food. The expert says it will not be an overnight occurrence but with the way things are turning out it could very well be earlier than expected. Jackie. Thanks so much for that update, Madhu. FBC TV celebrates its fourth birthday today. Years of planning, a complete overhaul of broadcasting house and changes in the work culture have today made FBC TV a household name. This is what Fijians saw when FBC TV first went to air four years ago. And the national broadcaster has never looked back since. It's been a, a whirlwind four years. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like the four years have gone because we've done so much uh, with so little and so quickly. Because, uh, you know, we, we've done our research. Nowhere in the world does a national TV station start off with a bang like this with, uh, you know, the biggest coverage in any country. Although FBC TV is still fairly new to the market, it's already setting the benchmark for quality programming local content and coverage to parts of Fiji which never had TV services. I enjoy uh, watching FBC TV and I wish FBC TV all the best. Happy birthday FBC TV and all the best. I like watching FBC TV and all the best FBC TV. The TV station now produces 13 commercial shows as well as local current affairs and talkback shows in the three main languages. There's no stopping FBC TV. There are big plans already underway. 
we are working on some new exciting shows for next year. Uh, all these new shows will be released early next year. Uh, we also uh, working very closely with the Ministry of Communication with the digital project and uh, the next phase for our development would be digital. Uh, we will be going on the digital channels and there is a possibility that we may have some pay channels as well. FBC says the national broadcaster will continue to increase production of compelling and relevant local content on FBC TV for all Fijians. Sports is up next. Here's Jamie with the latest. Like a Jackie and good evening in sports tonight. Fiji men's and women's sevens teams present Itatau today before leaving for Dubai sevens. And boxing makes a long awaited return to the north. Details after the break. Bula FM number 2 and Ser. Alifretti Veto Kani is one week away from achieving his childhood dream of donning the Fiji 7th jumper. Although the 22-year-old's call-up came after the axing of Emori Wanga due to a technicality, Veto Kani is determined to prove his worth in the team at the Dubai and Cape Town 7th tournaments. Charlie and Dada Kadaka reports. The Fiji men's and women's sevens teams will be departing for United Arab Emirates tomorrow as the new World Seven Series gets underway from next week. The newest kid on the block is ecstatic about his selection and promises to deliver on game day. It's uh, very tough and uh, I'll just try my best to be best in uh, playmaking this mid sevens squad. The president bestowed the nation's good wishes upon the two teams as they set off. As we work towards Rio next year, our prayers and our good wishes go with you all. And we will pray that Almighty God will guide you safely. The men's team jets off tomorrow to Abu Dhabi, where a scrimmage session is planned against the fast-improving USA Eagles. And we are very thankful that we've been uh, looked after personally by um, Abu Dhabi Harlequins uh, Club. And they've been sponsoring us uh, the past two years, going on to the third year. So, I mean, with the game against US, it's a scrimmage. Uh, it kind of gauges where we were at that last game and where we are now. Uh, but we're looking forward to it. Fiji will go into the new season with a target on his back as rival teams look to get one over the World Series defending champions starting from Dubai next week. Talent Ota Kavaka, FBC Sports. And a reminder that you can watch the Dubai Sevens live on FPC TV and it starts on the 4th of December. Meanwhile, meanwhile Telecom Fijiana coach Ilyasa Tainivula has made two changes to the side which won the Olympic qualifying tournament in New Zealand. Former Fiji netball rep Vaiti Wangatamu comes in for injured winger Asenate Savu, while 18 year old Tawana Sauto replaces Brittany Coates. I had wanted to try out something new and a different spot uh, altogether. <laughs> The Telecom Fijiana side will also depart for Dubai tomorrow and takes on Canada in its opening match at 9 p.m. next Thursday. Charlie Ndaudakadaka joins us live now. Charlie, the men's and women's coaching teams have been working very closely in the lead-up to the New World 7 Series. What can we expect from both sides? Yes, well, I'm uh, here outside uh, Government House in Suva where the uh, two teams presented their Itatau to the president earlier today without the uh, coach uh, Ben Ryan and Fijiana coaching director Chris Cracknell who left for Abu Dhabi earlier today uh, where the two teams will be based next week uh, to acclimatize to the weather. It's going to be an exciting start to the season. All teams want to begin on a high note and uh, this will only add to the uh, level of competition. All teams, uh, uh, both in the men's and women's World Series, have come uh, prepared for this, especially those who have already qualified uh, for the Rio Olympics next year. For the teams, uh, it's just a matter of fine-tuning their team needs uh, to try and get the best combinations. So uh, we should be in for some uh, exciting times come next week. Jamie. Thanks for that update, Charlie. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to the new 7 Series. 
Meanwhile, a lucky Fijian working against climate change has had a dream come true. The opportunity to watch the Hong Kong Sevens live in the grandstands at Sokon Po. Chris Ward won tickets to next year's Hong Kong Sevens after entering a competition run by FBC TV, Vodafone Fiji and Fiji Airways. Rohit Deo with the story. Rugby lover Chris Ward has always wanted to be at the pinnacle of Sevens Rugby to witness the Vodafone Fiji Sevens team play. Ward says it's still hard to believe that he's going to Hong Kong. The call came in yesterday, uh, but I honestly thought it was a prank. Uh, but then when I got the email, I was like, okay, so this is probably legit. Uh, but yeah, um, right now I may not feel it, but I think as it takes on getting closer to April, then I'll probably get the excitement really kick in there. Eh? He gets to take one more person with him, but Ward says he still hasn't decided who to take. Well, I don't know uh, who the second person will be, honestly. Yeah? Um, while, I was, while I was sitting there, I was thinking of taking my sister, but then she has to fly down from Wellington. I'm going up to see her. Uh, my friend is getting married, so it will be a good, uh, uh, good price for him just to take him away before he settles down. So, yeah, uh, there's a few people I've got in mind, but, yeah, I guess I won't find out until a couple of days from flying off. Ward had texted in Kiwis three times. FBC TV has announced a similar competition today for the inaugural Singapore Sevens. We are also giving a chance to one lucky viewer to win uh, two tickets to Singapore. As you all know, Fiji Airways has announced uh, its flights to Singapore from next year. Um, a week after the inaugural flight, is going to be the Singapore Sevens. FBC TV has also named its sponsors for the live coverage of upcoming World Seven series. Vodafone, Coats, Epco Coatings, Pacific Energy and Fiji Airways has helped the broadcasting company to bring the event to 93% of Fiji's homes. The 10 tournament series begin with the Dubai leg next Friday. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Tonga Under-20 rugby side wants to finish strong at the Oceania Junior Rugby Trophy Tournament that starts in Suva this weekend. The Tongans are the first to arrive for the competition after touching down at Nandi International today. Josephine Avula reports. Looking calm after landing in Nandi, the young ruggers from the Kingdom of Tonga are keen on delivering their best come game day. Coach Lueli Fusimalohi says their priority now is to get players to adapt to a different environment. My aim for the tournament to win the tournament and I hope to for the players and because the, the, the air is different, is different, it's good, I'm, I'm trying to recover the boys. Fusimalohi adds the team had to determine the right combination of players in a short period of time. I'm 